Hey, hey, friends of revolutionaries. Moving on to the next figure from the DC Universe Classics Wave 16 set, the Bane Wave, to kind of go along, of course, with Bane and Dark Knight Rises, now in theaters. Uh, something where, that wasn't a plug, that's just the way I said it. <laughs> we are taking a look at, uh, at the comic version of one of my favorite ex-Confederate bounty hunters. Not there are that many. We're taking a look at Jonah Hex. Jonah Hex. The comic version. And I'll talk about that more here in a minute. But um, yeah, actually, very cool that we got Hex. You know, I'll just talk about it now. <laughs> um, normally, when a DC uh, uh, movie, or a DC character gets a movie, we see Mattel put out the character. The, they usually handle the action figures. Well, when uh, when the Hex movie came out, we didn't see the comic version of Hex. We didn't even see a movie master's version, you know, like they did for Green Lantern and Batman and so forth. Hex, at the time, was being totally ignored by Mattel. Now, there is another, another company that picked it up and did an awesome job at it, which we'll see. But, uh, but yeah, you know, for Hex fans, for Mattel fans, we actually had to wait until Wave 16 to even get the comic version of him. You know, they didn't even do the comic version at the time that this, the movie had come out, which is a bit of a disappointment. I think that, uh, I think it could have built a lot more hype before we were let down. <laughs> but, um, yeah, we finally got him. We finally got Hex. Kind of a surprise. You know, I don't know, uh, I don't know, of all the figures that are in the set... I really think that the Batman and the Hex are probably the two that had the most tooling done to them. They're the most original in the set. Of course, there's a Creeper, Riddler, Robin, and then Mercury. I do think Hex and Batman, from what I can tell, seem to have been the two that, that, that had the most originality to them. And we may never see this Batman used again. Well, we might talk about that later. But we certainly don't think I'll see a whole lot of Hex ever again. I don't know if we'll see much of this figure reused ever again. So kudos uh, to Mattel for making him, especially considering you're probably not going to see a whole lot of him again. Uh, the packaging, just regular DC Universe Classics packaging. You know, we already kind of talked about the kind of explosion on the bubble, kind of expanding from the back here. Uh, his inside bubble, or the inside plastic, actually has what seem to be uh, crows or some type of birds on there. If you can see that on there, you can kind of see the wing on this one a little bit. My light's not all that great, so bear with me. Uh, as I had said, with uh, Mercury, instead of having like a profile of, or a picture of the character, they've got like an emblem, and they've got the crossed pistols with Hex's eye staring out. Also have it there on the bottom, exactly as I mentioned, so that if you stack the figures, you can tell who's who. Uh, on the back, there is the picture of Hex, the other figures we've talked about, and eventually Bane. The write-up, as a child, Jonah Hex was sold by his father to an Apache chieftain and trained in Apache ways of war. When the chief's, when the chief's son challenged Jonah to a ritual tomahawk duel, Jonah broke the rules and the tribe punished him by searing his face with a red-hot tomahawk. So if anybody knew, apparently that's how it actually happened. Uh, cast out, hideously scarred, and utterly alone, Hex rode west to make a living as a bounty hunter. He became a fugitive's worst nightmare. You know, they kind of skip over the fact that he was a member of the Confederate Army. Why? I don't know. <laughs> but his first appearance is All-Star Western, Volume 2, Number 10, 1972. Real name, Jonah Hex, Occupation Bounty Hunter, Base of Operations, the Old West. The rent's better there. <laughs> you get a better deal on the rent. Uh, special abilities, top physical condition, with amazing tracking skills and the ability to live off the land. Excellent marksman with any firearm. So, uh, so I guess, you know, as far as the 1800s go, yeah, he's got a little dab of Batman in him. Being that this is a Batman-related wave, Hey, he's got a touch of Batman of the Old West. But let's just kind of take a look at him in the packaging. Tell you what, let's go ahead and pop Hex out of the pack. Have some fun. Be right back. All right, well, we've got Hex out of the pack. 
And uh, for a comic version of the character, it's actually not too bad. It is not too bad. Um, it's something where I it really makes me appreciate this with the other Hex figure, which we'll get a look at, really makes me appreciate how each of the two companies, how they do their thing right. <laughs> I'll explain. I'll explain as we go through. But, uh, but in this case, this is, of course, the Mattel DC Universe Hex, the comic Hex, and it looks it. I mean, it's got the complete, you know, comic Hex look, you know, the uh, the uh, uh, bandolier going across with his with his uh, uh, bullets. Again, you know he's got his belt here. Again, kind of bristling with the with the bullets for his handgun. Got that holster back there. We'll show. We'll see that here in a minute. The sculpt on the face is really nice. You know, if there's one thing, if there's one complaint I had about the other hex figure, the one based on the movie, was that. You know, the, the makeup job, I mean, it wasn't bad, but it didn't really go far enough. You know, when you look at that hex here with the rolled back eye, kind of the scarring on the face and that big gap in his cheek, I mean, that really is hex. That is hex. So, you know, it's actually really cool to get a hex figure that it, that you know, it's from the comic that, that really, you know, tried to, to capture that comic feel. And, of course, he's got his unscarred face with the blonde hair. His Confederate hat, which doesn't come off, unfortunately. Well, actually, let me say that. <laughs> after uh, after uh, Zantana, I'm, I'm almost okay with the hats being sculpted on. You know, Zantana made me realize I don't need hats to come off. If they're sculpted on, I'm okay with that, at least from Mattel. But, um, oh, one thing I didn't mention before, and actually it, it's kind of a, 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 something I want to, to point out when I was talking about the packaging. Yes, this is probably going to be another long video. But, um, but I don't know if it was by design or if it was planned, because, of course, this set came out well before Flashpoint, well before this whole new 52. And yet, uh, and yet, when it happened, when Flashpoint took place, even Hex, whose stories usually take place outside the DC Universe, even he was involved. Um, they actually kind of moved him into old Gotham, like old 1800s Gotham, where he met uh, Artemis Arkham, you know, the guy whose name would later be on the Asylum. And, uh, and had them working together in old Gotham. So, you know, when you think about the, uh, a, a, a lawmaker, a, a lawman, or a peacemaker, a crime fighter in old Gotham, yeah, I think, I think Hex is a good choice. I think Hex is actually really cool. If, uh, if, you, can, if, you, can, uh, if you can read one-off stories, you know, if, if you don't mind buying one-off comics for the story, I don't. I don't remember what the what it was. What the what the arch was called, but uh, but it was it was right about the time of the new fifty two. It was during the flashpoint, and uh, Hex actually ma met um, Artemis Arkham in Old Gotham. So <laughs> that place has had problems for a long time. But uh, yeah, I want to point that out because it was just kind of cool that we got Hex here. Which is totally a surprise. If we would have got him, I was really expecting that we would have got him for the movie. Uh, but, um, but yeah, looking at the figure, overall, it's a great figure. It looks really nice. Much brighter colors than the movie figure. Of course, this is the comic version. But they still kind of dingy it up with uh, different colors of gray, different dry brushes. What would either be dust or maybe dried blood stains. You know, I'm not too sure. They seem to be around bullet holes. Along his back. It's actually really, really good. Of course, he has the CSA, Confederate States of America, belt buckle. Same kind of dingy up boot, uh, pants and boots. Got his spurs. 
And really great, it'd be really great to get the uh, to get the uh, original vigilante, the cowboy vigilante. That would be a nice figure to get. Of course, you know, <laughs> the uh, the DC Universe, yeah, not to, not retail anymore, but it still would have been a great figure to have. That's one that's one I might pick up separately from Maddie if uh, if they kept it going. But yeah, Hex is actually really really cool. Uh, in the way of his articulation, his head actually does go up and down and twist, so you actually get some use out of the ball joint there. The arms come up and out, twist the shoulder, bicep, single joint at the elbow, and a twist at the wrist. There's a twist at the waist here, but there's no crunch in the body, which kind of surprised me because this top torso is a complete sculpt. It, it's, a, it's, like a, it's like a fresh tooling of, of a torso, but no articulation, no crunch. You know, after they did uh, Guy Gartner with that big plastic body piece on him, I almost would expect that rather than doing a whole new chest with no crunch, that they would have just somehow used that idea of a, of a plastic body piece to make that work and maybe sculpted in the bandolier and the belt and that sort of thing. But, um, yeah, so no crunch there. Kind of a surprise. Uh, the legs do come up and out. He's got the lower part of his shirt, which is actually kind of a stiff plastic. It's not really stiff. It's just it's so small, it's so short here, that there's not really a whole lot of give because it's just so stubby. But it comes up and out. Twist to the thigh. Single joint at the knee. Uh, nothing at the boot, but hinge at the ankle. So very cool, especially like the uh, the feathers. Again, this is a these are little things that we see on Hex from the comic that we didn't really see much in the movie. Not to say the movie figure was bad. <laughs> we'll talk about it in a minute, but um, but it's just it's it's a nice little tidbit, you know, little things to uh, to add to the uh, to the comic character that really make it shine, and it's actually really really cool. Now, one thing, well, I'll get to it in a minute. <laughs> we'll talk about it here in a second. In the way of, of his accessories, he just comes with two. Comes with his uh, short, uh, short barrel shotgun, which, if you saw on his back, there's a spot there for him to plug that in, like so. And he's got his revolver, which actually. Take a look at the gloves real quick. Gloves are worth pointing out. Got some nice stitching on them. As far as I know, that's an all-original sculpted hand. This is actually pretty cool. It's got a revolver. Which, it's so, it, it's really, it's really pretty small. <laughs> you know, it's actually pretty tiny. Scale-wise, I don't know if that's genuinely how big these guns were. But when he holds it, it's not really all that impressive. <laughs> but he does have a holster here, which, you know, the way the holster looks, it kind of reminds me of those, uh, those plastic holsters you wear as a kid, you know. They were just kind of those cardboard plastic holsters that were brown, you know. Put your cap gun in. It just kind of reminds me of that with the, uh, the kind of little leather thing coming off the stud. More likely... For a couple of reasons, I'll put the shotgun on his, in his hand, which still looks kind of small, actually, but certainly more impressive. Put him up there like that. Now, as I mentioned, for a movie figure. He's actually really good, or I'm sorry, for a comic figure. But, uh, but seriously, you know, it's something where I am very happy. I'm really happy that uh, Mattel only really did, or I guess wanted to do, the comic version. And it actually was NECA that got the movie figure, the Josh Brolin figure. Because that, I mean, it really shows... That when it comes to comic characters, I don't think I don't think NECA could have done as well to do the comic version. I just don't. It's not their style. 
But at the same time, I don't think even a movie master's version of Hex could have come anywhere close to being as nice as what NECA made. So, uh, so it's, it's one of the things where I'm thrilled because I get the best of both worlds. If you're a NECA, if you're a Jonah Hex fan, you've got the best of both worlds. You're getting the best, I think, uh, comic company or, or comic figures to do the comic version and you've got a really great company who does movie figures to do the movie version. I mean, it, 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 it's a win-win. And that was all me. <laughs> the only thing, the only thing I wish they had done was on the, uh, on the comic version, I do wish they would have taken the, uh, the cape from the Gentleman Ghost and then either retooled it or done something to it to kind of make the cape or the trench coat cape the way the movie figure does. I mean, he doesn't really wear it that much. He's, he does wear it, but not that much. Certainly not as much as he did in the movie. So, so it kind of makes sense he doesn't have it, but I still think it would have been a cool thing. It still would have been really cool to have uh, kind of that cape trench coat thing off the gentleman ghost. That, that's all it would have been. If, uh, if I get a chance to get another one, I, I'm, I might buy a loose gentleman. Well, <laughs> probably not. He's expensive. But um, maybe the two-pack with uh, Hawkwoman. But if I get a chance to get another gentleman ghost, I might try and do a custom job on that because I think he would look really cool with it. I think he'd look really good with it. Now, uh, of course, being that he is in the set, he does come with a Bane piece, the uh, left leg it looks like. Which uh, means that we've got a pile building. <laughs> uh, when we're done with the set, we'll kind of take a look at all of it when we're done. And we'll put, uh, we'll put old Bane together. But uh, for now, this has been taking a look at the... And it, it's not officially called this, but it is the DC Universe comic version of Jonah Hex. Definitely recommend checking him out if you're a Hex fan. You probably already got him. You're probably going to pose these two together. Hope you enjoy watching. Rate, comment, subscribe, join the revolution. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye.